Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Celtic Warband here, bringing you another part to my tournament, my 500 subscribers Rome 2 tournament. Uh, this is another round battle with two other competitors, uh, The Hunted and Gearhawk. So they are going to be squaring up to see if uh, one of them could advance to round two. So if you haven't checked out the first battle already with Hamdog versus the Red Celt, I urge you to do that. And uh, all of the rules should be in the description as well as the funding for round one. So let's get into it. All right, so here we are on the battle map here, and as you can see, we've got another Greek faction over here. Uh, well, Hellenic faction, I should say, and we've got a Hellenic opponent as well. Uh, these are two sigils that I get confused all of the time. Uh, so we've got Egypt, which is over on this side, and Athens, which is on uh, this side. So Gearhawk is playing as Athens, so let's look at his army composition first. We could actually probably uh, just hit play. Uh, so he's bringing some Hippias Lancers, uh, kind of scattered in with his uh, ranks. So he's got four units of them. His general is actually a picked hoplite, so they are on foot. And then he's bringing four units of pikemen. And four units of Thurios, or no, how many does he have? Let me just make sure. Yeah, he's got four units of Thurios hoplites. And then he has uh, one, two units of militia hoplites kind of scattered in between. And then he has four units of archers. Uh, so very, very spear heavy. No Thorax Swordsman over here. And he, even his cav is shock cav. It's not really melee cav. Uh, so this is a very, very good defensive build. Let's see how he uses it against the Egyptians. So the Hunted is playing as Egypt. Uh, he's got some of the camel archers way over there. Well, that's not really a good shot. I guess we'll zoom over there and take a look at them. So we got these camel archers here. Uh, hopefully they're going to be able to get some harass off. The only problem is I think the camels are slower than cavalry. So uh, the Hippias Lancers will definitely be able to catch them. But let's take a look at the rest of the forces. So the Hunted is bringing some Thorax Swordsmen. So he's got a couple units over here. Uh, he's got some Thorax Pikemen in the front lines. Looks like uh, three units of them. He's got uh, two units of Royal Peltis back here. I'm a huge fan of Peltis. I really, really enjoy them. Uh, they can tear armor up. So I usually prefer them if I know I'm going with a semi-rush build or a rush build. Uh, I'll bring Peltis. And he's got more Thorax Swordsmen over on this flank. And then for the rest of his cavalry, he's got Ptolemic Cavalry for all three. Uh, so that's really the only way uh, that I... <laughs> I can distinguish between the two because I'm like, oh, which, which one is Athens and which one's... E oh, yeah, the Ptolemaic Cavalry. That must be Egypt. <laughs> uh, they look so much the same. I, I really need to, to learn them. They're both birds and they're both, like, pretty blue. So, uh, anyways, let's go ahead and start the battle. You can see it's only a five-minute battle. So, uh, let's see what happens here. I'm going to kind of keep it in the middle for now to uh, see what's going on. But it looks like we got a heavy presence of the Ptolemy Cavalry over on the uh, right flank. Um, he does have, uh, Gearhawk does have some Hippias Lancers over here that would be able to redeploy. But no, he's actually going to move uh, right in for a charge with his Hippias Lancers, completely ignoring the Camel Archers as well, which is really interesting here. See what goes on here. He's got a nice charge with the Pais Lancers. Yeah, just running right through and into the pikemen. Uh, just leveling those two units. So that's really, really good play there. Uh, some of them are going to be able to get back up, though, as you can see. But wow, this just started very, very quickly. Now he's moving to uh, push away those camel archers. But unfortunately, the Peltis are really going to be able to deplete uh, his cavalry quickly. We've got another unit of Hippias Lancers running away from the Ptolemy Cavalry. You can see that we've got some of the Ptolemy Cavalry actually getting in behind the lines of the enemy. More Hippias Lancers charging into the Thorax Swordsmen over here. These Camel Archers, uh, they're actually not even firing at the moment, which is interesting. They're facing the wrong way. But uh, we've got a nice solid uh, line of the Thurios Hoplites and Militia Hoplites here. But uh, the Hippias Lancers are starting to get a little depleted because as they charge through these units, uh, they're actually going into the pikemen. Let's go ahead and slow this down just a bit so I can keep up with what's going on over here. So it looks like he's going to get a nice charge into the backs of these pikes, but somehow some of the cavalry is still falling. 
Uh, you'd think that that would be a pretty safe charge uh, for the cavalry. But yeah, they're just going to charge right through the ranks, throwing these pikemen forwards onto their stomachs. Let's go ahead and take a look at the HUD here. So uh, most of the Hunted's forces haven't even gotten into uh, melee over here, which is a tough thing to see. Uh, the Ptolemic Cavalry, though, is getting in behind the pikemen, which is good. And we got the general over here, but it looks like, uh, looks like the back of Gearhawk's army is defended quite well with pikes. So he has kind of uh, made this little defensive fortification here uh, while he just harasses the Egyptian lines with his cavalry. Uh, but they are getting quite depleted. So he's going to have to be careful with that. Uh, the general actually getting hit really hard by archer fire as well. Uh, he needs to get out of there, get out of range before he loses his general. Let's go ahead and let them charge forwards now. And there we go. I'm not sure where they're going to be charging it. Looks like he sees this little weak spot here, so he's going to try to exploit it. Getting a really nice charge with his cavalry, though. Really nice charge. Uh, into those Thurios hoplites. The only problem is, is that now Gearhawk is going to close the gap with his pikemen and uh, push forwards. His archers are also firing down on them as well, which is not good. But we've got the Royal Peltis actually pushing into melee, so they must have already used up all of their ammo, crazily enough. Uh, they do not have as much ammo as archers, so that is one of their drawbacks. Yeah, we've got the uh, Peltis... Finally getting into the lines against the Athenians. And I hope the volume is good for you guys. I did listen to it beforehand, but I'm actually recording all of these videos right in a row. I've got a couple of energy drinks here. and I'm just going to crush it out tonight. Uh, so I won't really know what it sounds like until all of them are recorded. Because it takes forever on my internet to upload just one video, which really sucks. But yeah, we've got these Thorax Swordsmen engaged against these Militia Hoplites over here, as you can see. Uh, or, sorry, these are the uh, Thorax thorax Pikemen. My bad. But yeah, it's just an all-out brawl here. You can see that the, the lines have kind of formed in the center here, uh, but we've got some Ptolemic Cavalry kind of peeling away from the Hippias Lancers. I think he wants to go for a good charge on the picked hoplites, the general. But uh, he is quite well defended by a pikeman unit over here. And uh, looks like the slingers are still going to be firing down on the Ptolemic cavalry, trying to keep them out of, uh, out of harm's way, basically. But we've got a nice flank with some of the Thurios hoplites over here, actually getting in behind the... Uh, the Thorak Pikemen. So the Militia Hoplites are holding in front, but he's got his Thurios Hoplites in behind. So that's going to cause some problems. Even for elite Thorak Pikemen like this, uh, they don't really cope well with being outflanked. Could probably go ahead and turn on the battle sounds again. Two minutes left in this battle already. And looks like we got some of the uh, pikemen for Gearhawk's Athenian force uh, really pushing over on the flanks. It actually doesn't look like there's much over here as far as Athens is concerned. The Royal Peltis are getting really cut down. Uh, the Camel Archers over there, they're being cut down. Uh, Thorax Swordsmen over here are breaking the spears though, which is to be expected because uh, the swords seem to trump the spears. But what do we got here? We got uh, some more Thorax pikemen fighting these Militia Hoplites, but again, more Militia Hoplites actually pushing in behind the Pikes. And these Militia Hoplites are getting stuff done. Because you can see a lot of these Thorak Pikemen, they've actually pulled out their swords now because... Uh, they can't really hold a pike testudo, basically, or a pike square formation. Uh, if they get attacked uh, behind, then they drop their pike and turn around to face them with swords. But pikes are pretty ineffective uh, at that point. 
And now some of them are getting cut down as the Athenian pikes start to push into their flanks. Look at that. Just bodies dropping everywhere. Even some arrow fire coming in. These guys are just getting annihilated. So a lot of death on the battlefield here. Uh, it looks like Gearhawk has kind of secured a victory here. The balance of power certainly seems to think so. Uh, the Hunted does have a few very elite units left. The problem is, is that he's really out of cavalry at this point. Uh, and most of his units are engaged in melee and outflanked at the same time. So that's not really too good. We've got the Picktop Lights actually fighting some of these Thorax Swords. And they are starting to break as well. Uh, these Picktop Lights are beasts. And there we go. Close defeat. So... The Athenians actually pull a victory off here against the Egyptians. So Gearhawk is one up, and the Hunted, if he loses the next battle, he will be eliminated. So let's hope that that doesn't happen. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next battle. Okay, so here we are in the second battle. So as we said from the last battle there, Gearhawk is one to nothing against Hunted. So if Hunted, the Hunted loses this battle, then he is out of the tournament and Gearhawk will move on to the second round. So with that in mind, the Hunted over here has now chosen Macedon, the faction we saw in the last battle. Uh, Macedon is a very popular faction, as uh, I'm sure you can imagine. They have a very, very powerful roster and uh, they're just a pretty all-around solid faction in general. Uh, but Gearhawk is actually, he's, he, I think he wants to secure his, uh, his spot in the second round. So he's actually going to play his Rome card in this battle. So he is bringing the elite Romans to the battlefield here on this desert plain. So let's take a look at Gearhawk's army here. So he's got four units of Leves. Uh, so they're just a standard javelin unit here. And then he has some Eagle cohort. Uh, let's see, I think he has just four units of them as like his no he's got some armored legionaries scattered in there as well uh, but a good solid front line so four units of eagle cohort and uh, one unit of armored legionaries then he's got two units of triarii so he's got one on either side that are going to be supporting his cavalry and he's got some sochi equites over here and then in behind he's got uh, four units of his study and he's got his general and bodyguard and as you can see over here triarii with more sochi equites and uh, he's got some Equites Extraordinary in the center. And then looking at the Macedonians, the Hunted, he is bringing some mercenary Cretan archers, or Cretan archers, sorry. And uh, he's just bringing a basic unit of archers. And then he has uh, four units of foot companions. So these are the most elite uh, pikemen. So actually he has three units of them, sorry. And then he has two units of shield bearers, one on either side. And then he's got companion cavalry companion cavalry and companion cavalry so he's only bringing three units of cavalry uh, but I think it's because these foot companions are just so expensive but uh, we can go and hit play here and see what happens so this battles a little bit longer so I think they kind of take uh, take more time I haven't seen most of these battles in full. I mainly just uh, started the battle and then I would be doing other stuff around the house and then pop back in from time to time to make sure I didn't miss the saving of the replay. But I think if I have another tournament, uh, I, I'm kind of toying with the idea, as I said in the first episode, or sorry, in the first uh, round one battle, that I'm kind of toying with the idea for my uh, 1,000 sub a special milestone battle or series of battles uh, to do a medieval kingdoms 12-12 uh, tournament. Ugh, my mind is like working on, uh, working on just energy drinks, and that's about it. No sleep. But yeah, I'm thinking of doing a 12-12 tournament, and I think if I do that, I'm just going to get uh, kind of pair the two play players together, and then have them battle it out and then just send me the replays because uh, it is a uh, pretty time consuming for me to uh, try to join into the matches and then save the replay myself I'd rather just have it sent to me if I'm honest but yeah as you can see the balance of power is not looking good for us it seems that Rome is uh, the kind of the choice contender for the winner in this round 
And it's really just down to, it's kind of the quality versus quantity thing again. Uh, because uh, less cavalry for the hunted, because he's got these very elite uh, foot companions, uh, they cost a lot of money. And remember, it's only 12k uh, per person for the first round. And that might sound like a lot, but it's really not uh, when you consider, I think these guys are like a k each, or like 1200 or something. But he does have a nice formation here, so you can see that he's just protecting his Cretan archers. So uh, if Cavalry does decide to charge in, uh, he will be able to pull them back. But looks like he's just going to pull them back behind the lines anyways. Uh, he does have the superior range, though, uh, against Gearhawk, because Gearhawk just has uh, Leves. And Leves are a Javelin unit, but they don't have as good of a range. But we've got this very cool formation here. Uh, from the Romans marching forwards in Testudo. So it looks like they want to kind of minimize their losses as they get into melee, which is very smart. Because uh, the archers, uh, after a little while, they will be able to start to pick apart this uh, heavy armor. But uh, they've got shields too, so they're going to be able to block most of what comes against them. And here come the Leves moving forwards as well. Got the Sochi Equites Extraordinary right in the middle. And then we got the Histadi in, in behind. And uh, these guys are just so cost effective. I think they cost 300 denarii, but uh, they are a solid infantry unit, these Histadi. I think that's what just makes Rome so formidable, is they have such a large roster of really solid infantry. Uh, and pretty cost competitive, I would say, as well. Uh, even these Triarii are, are really, really good. I, I rarely play Rome without a couple units of Triarii. Uh, the Principes are okay, but uh, for a little bit of an upgrade, uh, well, for a little bit more cash, you can upgrade uh, them to Legionaries. So I usually end up doing that, but... Looks like Rome is moving forwards closer to the ranks. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about is that as soon as those Leves actually get into into range. They're going to be able to cut these uh, foot companions up pretty easily because the javelins really have good armor piercing damage. Got the archers firing down there. Uh, looks like the hunted kind of has the same idea so he is focusing the leves with his archers uh, which is smart. I, I wouldn't be focusing any ammo at these uh, legionaries that are in Testudo. That would just be a waste. But yeah, here come the Leves. They're going to start to fire because they are in range now. And they're probably going to start to cut down these foot companions. And it looks like we got some cavalry moving forwards. Not sure why. I wouldn't be putting them into range like that. And there's no way he can charge the front lines here. He's going to have to try to peel off and go around the flanks. But yeah, this extraordinary... Well, they still have 80 men, so that's good. Looks like they aren't being directly focused. But here come the Roman forces. Looks like we got more cavalry pushing forwards. They're going to be charging into uh, this unit of shield bearers that was in shield wall. Uh, we've also got some flanking around. And we've also got the general... Uh, engaged in melee for uh, the hunted. But we've got uh, some support coming in. The Hastati are moving to support the cavalry on the flanks, but these shield bearers are going to be very solid. And what do we got? Kind of the same thing going on around here. He's got some cavalry in behind. If you see over here, uh, some Sochi Equite is being cut down by the companion cavalry, but the Triarii are there to kind of lend a hand. And the problem is, is that now we've got some cavalry right in behind the lines uh, to just get rid of all of these archers. Same thing over here. Probably going to be a nice charge by these <laughs> very heavily armored Roman cavalry. Yeah, just decimating uh, the ranged focus of this Macedonian force. And the problem is, is that uh, the hunted can't really turn around with his uh, foot companions because the Roman... Uh, heavy infantry are right there. But it looks like they're starting to push into melee, but unfortunately, you can see that the Leves are really starting to pick them apart. Let's kind of get an overview of the battle here, just so you can kind of see what's going on. 
So the general is still engaged in melee, the companion cavalry, but uh, he is about to get closed in by these two units of cavalry. Uh, the levees are here doing some damage. This foot companion unit has already lost 60 men. And uh, this foot companion unit is actually outflanked by Hastadi. So we got some eagle cohort in front and some Hastadi in behind. Got some major battling going on here with the foot companions. They're going to be pretty solid in melee just because they're Macedon's finest. But uh, at the end of the day, they are pikemen. Nice. Uh, that was a leg sweep there, too. Oops. You could see he's missing his limb. That would suck so bad. Because he's probably still alive, I would imagine. But here we go. Some more uh, nice cavalry charges here. Uh, charging the very thin line of companion uh, pikemen or foot companions that are still fighting in melee. But uh, these armored legionaries and eagle cohort are really done the job. A little bit of lag there. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, it's probably because I'm uploading a video and recording and playing at the same time. But yeah, this companion cavalry is having a really tough time. Uh, the general will probably fall very, very soon, I'm thinking. And uh, you can see the victorious Roman cavalry kind of just riding around the battlefield. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's not looking good for the hunted there. I'm actually not uh, too sure what, what he has left over here. He does have a couple units of shield bearers fighting on either flank. But, again, they're about to be outflanked themselves by this Roman infantry. Oh, maybe not. Oh, this guy just slaughtered. Uh, let's see who wins this little 1v1. Oh, he's going to retreat? No. Fight, man. Fight. Okay, let's see what happens to him. I'm kind of interested. He's going to run into this unit. He's still fighting. Oh, 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 no. Rest in peace, Macedon. Rest in peace. And uh, yes, I think that's about it. Um, the only thing is, is that Hunted didn't uh, quit out of the battle. He didn't admit defeat. So I had to charge in my forces to be able to end the battle. But that is pretty much it. Uh, looks like Gearhawk is victorious and moving on to the second round. So thanks very much, Hunted, for joining. I really appreciate it. And Gearhawk, we'll see you in the second round. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying this tournament so far. We've got two more first rounds to go before we move into the second round. So I, I will uh, see you in the next one.